continuing to talk about what's important um, and how convoluted it is uh, with how you determine it. Um, you know, because you're talking about interrelated things that may or may not matter to those things on a personal level. Um, I think the conclusion that I was trying to reach um, in my last video was just trying to say, alright, so we've got things that we can't do anything about, um, you know, but there are other things that we can do stuff about, but do those things even matter? Um, I think it's, it's partly that you need to find a scope, um, of things that you can determine do that either do or don't matter. Um, and then there's things that you can either do something about or not do anything, or are incapable of doing anything about. When you're talking about the heat death of the universe, there's nothing you could do about it, but it's important, and it should matter to you. It is possibly the only thing that, that um, does matter at all. Um, I need to find a place to like position my phone so it's So yeah, there's stuff that we can do stuff about, but it's really less important, uh, you know, when you consider the grand scheme of things. You could try to keep the sun from burning out, but really there's a bigger problem there, and that's that, you know, the universe is dying. It's dying a heat death, and there's nothing you can do about it. So it's like, alright, this thing is more important but there's nothing you could do to stop it, so is it really that important? Um, and I, I think that maybe what the facts are telling me is that I shouldn't care about it because I can't do anything about it. Um, and it's a different kind of not caring about it than something that's unfalsifiable. You know, trying to solve the heat death of the universe is in the same realm as trying to prove an unfalsifiable thing. Um, both are futile actions. When you're trying to prove something that's unfalsifiable, you know, you're, you're wasting your efforts. It's, it's called an unfalsifiable thing for a reason. Um, and when you're trying to prove something that's unprovable, like the, that there's a solution to the heat death of the universe, um, you're fighting the same kind of futile battle, um, or a similar kind, not, it's not exactly the same, because one thing, you know, with unfalsifiable stuff, you don't even know that that thing is out there, like, at all, that it even exists. With solving the heat death of the universe, you're saying that that thing does exist and is going to happen, but there is a hypothetical solution to it that is unfalsifiable. So there's there's uh, you know there's nuance there. Um, The heat death of the universe is a fact. The solution to a heat death of the universe is an unfalsifiable thing. Or is it? 
Um, I no, I think it's different because the heat death, the solution to the heat death of the universe, does not exist, and cannot exist, based on the knowledge that we have right now. It is not an unfalsifiable thing. It is falsifiable and has been falsified. So when you're pursuing a solution to it, it's just futile. Um, it's like, okay, the idea that we're brains in a jar, that's an unfalsifiable thing, and it doesn't matter. You shouldn't try to find a solution to it. The solution to the heat death of the universe is not a falsifiable thing. It is falsifiable. We have found it false, and there's nothing you can do about it, and you shouldn't care about it, and it's... But is it therefore not important? I think you should say yes. Um... Because there's, you know, nothing you can do is going to make a difference in it. Um, I, I think the other part of me, though, says that it is important because... Um, you know, the the things that, like anything else that would be important, if you scale any of those things up, this thing then becomes important. Um, you know, if you reduce something down to its core parts and you say, okay, why is this important? Um, you just keep coming back to the same thing, which is that, you know, the universe as a whole is important. Um, so it's like, why would this thing not be important? And, and I think the reason why I keep coming back to the heat death of the universe so many times, just every single time I try to think about philosophy, um, on a grand scale, is just because I don't want to accept it, um, any more than I don't want to accept death or... Um, like, you know, human death, or the death of our planet, or the solar system, or yada yada. You know, people are really reluctant to accept things when it means it's bad news for them. People don't want to have to change their paradigm um, when there are tons of things that go against that paradigm. Um, you know, because they're used to that paradigm. And they don't want to have to change, and they don't want to have to reevaluate what's important to them, and they don't want to have to accept the bad news, um, you know, that a paradigm shift might represent. And that's the same way with me. Um, I don't want to accept... Um, I don't want to have to accept the eventual death of the universe. So I feel like every time I think about it as a possibility, I just automatically think, no, no, that can't be possible. I don't want to believe it. Um, I don't want to accept it. You know, so there's this pushback, and so I try to end up, you know, I, I try to figure out these different solutions to a thing, and it's like, you know, it's it's a waste of time. Um, it's it's misdirected effort. Um, you know, and it's it's made worse by the fact that 
I don't really have any scientific training, so it's like, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this as a layperson, uh, listening to the conclusions that professionals um, have come up with, and going, okay, so as an outside observer, you know, who hasn't been just overwhelmed by, you know, the amount of data and the different theories, you know, thinking of, thinking that my intuition can be something that gives me an edge over um, other people who have actually studied it more, um, you know, and are, feel like they're at a deadlock in terms of ideas that they can come up with. You know, and, and I look at it as, okay, so you guys don't know, maybe there's something that you've missed because you've been, you know, kind of having this internal discussion and trying to figure things out, but, you know, you still don't have an answer. Um... Sometimes when, you know, you're an insider and, you know, you're surrounded by people who are in an, either in an echo chamber or you're just surrounded by so many different conflicting ideas, it's, it's hard to get back to your roots of just going, okay, intuitively, what makes sense? Um, you know sometimes once you've been concentrating on something for so long you lose your intuition you kind of lose your gut feeling of um, this or that is is intuitively correct you know and so you have to make an effort to um, To align your your feelings with your thoughts, um, and really all I've got are my feelings, just because I'm not an expert and I don't have um, I don't have my I don't have I don't have thoughts to align with my feelings. Um, all I've got are my gut reactions to the information that's being presented to me. Um, you know, and they might be more accurate than somebody who hasn't thought about it at all, but they're still not in line with um, experts who have actually studied it. You know, it's like, there's, you know, there's people that are concentrating on simple problems, um, which is probably the best approach, you know, just looking at fundamental things um, for the way that forces in the universe work. Um, you know, but there's bigger questions and stuff that doesn't make sense even to them. And that's kind of where you need people who are obliquely approaching a problem. Um, you know, kind of questioning the... I mean, that's what scientists are doing anyway. They're questioning the uh, commonly held assumptions, you know, in favor of um, new hypotheses. Um, for the way that things work. You know, it still doesn't make sense to me, and it does make sense to scientists, um, how the universe can, you know, how space itself expands. Um, you know, they've got a rough idea um, for how it works, but they 
they they don't have something that works with the standard model. Um, you know, so they're they're looking for answers and new forms of matter and energy and stuff. For me, though, you know, it, it doesn't make sense um, how you can have. Uh, how you can have a universe that's bigger than what the speed of light could have traveled in that time. Um, it doesn't make sense to me how space itself can expand. It's like, what does that even mean? Space is expanding. Um, you know, it, it doesn't make sense how you can have a universe that is uh, 14.8 billion years old and have light that's 14.9 billion years away. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about stuff that's like even, you know, it's 90 billion light years away. Um, I forget what the biggest what the furthest estimate of it is, you know, but you've got stuff that's further away than can just be explained by, um, you know, the speed of light and stuff. You know, so I don't get those things, and scientists don't get those things either. You know, they've got a, um... They've got a reason for it, but they don't have a, um, you know, formula that works, um, that's borne out by, you know, evidence that's collected. Um... You know, so with that, you know, you go, okay, so, you know, there's still gaps in the information that we've got. You know, there's gaps in our knowledge. Um, that doesn't mean you can just fill it with whatever you want to. Um, you don't, you don't get to say that, all right, because we don't understand X, therefore Y. Um, you know, it's like we've, we don't understand how we could solve, um, the death of the universe. That doesn't mean there's a solution. Uh, in fact, everything is telling us that we don't have a solution. We're not going to have one. Um, you know, so with that, assuming that this isn't a solvable problem. It's, it's, it's just like there's this unresolvable conflict in my mind between between, um, you know, wanting to survive and knowing that I can't survive. Um, it, and when I say I, I just mean like the universe in general. That we can't survive, that nothing can survive. Um, that nothing is going to outlive us. Um, you know, that eventually there's going to be a time where there's... where death has won out. Um, you know, and it's, it's just so discouraging because, you know, when you look at the entire history of life in the universe, it's just been this struggle to, you know, to survive and just against all odds to just prolong our lives just a little bit 
um, you know, even when you go back to like stuff before single celled bacteria um, or single celled organisms, you know, and you go, it was somehow managing to eke out a living. And it's just all of our efforts are just going to come to naught. And entropy wins. Um, you know, all of the things we have done to confront death and understand it and how to avoid it and how to make our lives better, it's just none of that is going to matter. Um, So, you know, it's kind of like, okay, so no matter what we do, we're going to die anyway. So what are we supposed to do? Um, it's like we're, we're, there is no there is no way out. It's already checkmate. We've already lost. So it's like, what do we do in the face of that? Do we just try to survive until the last second? You know, until... until the last subatomic particle separates from the other one. And the world and the universe just goes its separate ways. Um, does it just go back to that thing of doing unimportant things that distract us until we die? Um... I mean, is, is anything worthwhile that we could do? You know, there's this nihilistic approach that, um, you know, saying, well, you should just live it up. You know, you don't have anything to worry about. Um, so why not just try to make the most of it? Um, you know, there's, there's two sides to nihilism. One of them is that nothing matters, and then the other thing is that nothing matters, therefore it's liberating. Um, you should be able to choose your own destiny before, you know, before you die. And, you know, you get to pick what, what happens uh, what is what is important in your life? You know, so it's like okay, is is trying to find out what is important a futile effort because you know the eventual fate of the universe is that all all that you do is futile. Um, you know, is importance itself futile? Futile. I don't think it matters how you pronounce it. Um, I mean, I'm inclined to say that that's the case. Just, I guess. I guess then the question is, what is the next closest thing to something that's important? You know, when nothing is important, or everything is unimportant, what is the next closest thing that we have to that? Um, 
you know, when we say, well, the universe in general is unimportant and there's nothing lasting that we can do to affect the universe, what is, what is the next closest thing to that that we could have? You know, there's, there's still this resistance that I have when I think of that. That I go, okay, I don't want to accept that, therefore I'm just going to continue trying at this thing that gives me some sense of importance. Um, You know, and I guess, I guess the next closest thing to that would be saying, all right, what is the next existential crisis that we have? What is the next best thing that we can do to prolong ourselves until, you know, the end of the universe? Um, you know, in, in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, there's like this party uh, that's at the end of the world or at the end of the universe. Um, And, and I'm not just saying you just goof off doing unimportant stuff. I'm just trying to say, what is what is the next most important thing? Um, you know, but it's kind of like, okay, this is the only thing that should be important. Um... And, and everything else is just unimportant in comparison. There's just no scale in comparison um, that you could make. like you've got something that is infinitely important and then you've got something that is infinitesimally um infinitesimally important um it's like why should you care uh why should you care about that second thing at all um, when we already know that you, that first thing isn't going to be important at all. I mean, that first thing is, is you're unable to do anything about. I don't have a good answer for it. I guess I'll just talk more in the next video.